Welcome to another episode of Sports and Discourse with your host, Derek Stevenson. And guys, on today's episode, of course, um, you know, we had to get into it. Uh, Mark Pope, the new coach of the University of Kentucky Wildcats men's basketball team. Um, man, this was a crazy spectacle. Um, I'm not going to lie, I didn't see it coming. Um, when Calipari first, uh, you know, after the season was over, um, I was a little worried. I thought they were going to fire Calipari initially. Um, and, you know, I heard that uh, he he didn't even come back to Lexington initially after that game. Uh, I think he stayed in New Jersey for a while. So I felt like they was going to fire Calipari. Then they had the meeting. He did the press conference with Mitch. Uh, excuse me. And I thought um, I thought everything was going to at least be good until next year. I did think that Kentucky was going to start searching for a new basketball coach. But I thought that um, they was going to just have a few guys in mind and kind of survey the landscape to see who may be available. Um, just get their list together. And then if Calipari ended up having a successful season, cool. If he didn't, then, um, you know, obviously they could, um, you know, move on. But Calipari beat them to the punch. Um, you know, uh, he uh, he kind of pulled the the rug out from under him, if you will. Um, I think he caught them, uh, caught them with their pants down um, and they wasn't ready for it. Uh, me personally. You know, most people that know me from this show, they know that um, I usually, uh, I'm what you would call a big time supporter of Calipari, right? And slowly over the last several years, my support has just been uh, decreasing a little bit each season. And I finally got to my my breaking point where I said, man, I just um, personally, I just would like to see them uh, start to, um, you know, look for some other options and maybe go in another direction. And it's not that I don't like Calipari. Um, I respect him for what he's done. You know, he's a Hall of Fame coach. And I think uh, the beginning of his season or his uh, career at Kentucky, um, I think was was top tier. Um, I think it was um, – you know, the way the way he started off, we ended up, um, you know, we had like one championship and four Final Fours and like his first, you know, five or six seasons or something like that. So he started off hot. Um, you know, you couldn't really ask for a, a better start. But then slowly but surely, um, things just started to go south. And um, I think the main thing that that upset a lot of the fans and it, it even started to bug me after a little while was I just kind of felt like, um, he stopped caring about the fans as much. Um, you know, he always, uh, said that he was a, a player's first coach and that he wanted this university to be players first. And, you know, I think initially that may have rubbed some people the wrong way, but he did follow it up by saying, the winning will take care of itself. And he was backing that up in the beginning. So I think a lot of the fans, even though they didn't really necessarily care for that approach, the winning was in fact taking care of itself. So we were a lot more willing to compromise with him. Um, but I think it got to a point where I think we was the only ones compromising and he was not willing to compromise. He was not willing to meet us in the middle. Um, Cal was exactly what Kentucky needed at that time, and he helped in bringing Kentucky back to the highest level of college basketball. I agree with you. I think um, at that particular time, he was exactly what we needed because um, I think that Kentucky basketball was starting to get to the point where it wasn't respected the way it should have been. And I think he, he bought this new sense of energy, uh, energy and a sense of urgency. Um, he – he definitely um, expanded the brand of Kentucky basketball uh, beyond just, um, you know, 
real true college basketball fans. He expanded it into casual basketball fans. We had, um, you know, the celebrity status. We had uh, LeBron James showing up for games. Ben Roethlisberger, obviously Drake. Um, you know, he brought a lot of attention to Kentucky, and it definitely did bring us back. But I think it just ultimately the fans got annoyed with him because he just wasn't willing to uh, to change. He just seemed kind of stubborn and stuck in his ways. And I think that's what caused him to uh, his relationship with the boosters and Mitch Barnhart to just kind of go south. And then, you know, once they stopped supporting him, he probably wasn't able to make certain moves or do certain things that he needed to do. And ultimately, he felt like um, it was time to him, time for him to move on. And I feel like a lot of the fans felt uh, the same way. However, I believe he lost a step in his approach. Basketball goes through changes over time. Ten years was incredible. I agree with that as well. I think, um, I think he, the way he coaches the game, I think just uh, times have just changed so much. And, like, I'll give you a main example. I think in in the beginning of the season, Kentucky was not healthy, but I think Kentucky was playing his best basketball when it was focusing on the smaller lineup. Um, we had basically Trey Mitchell was a stretch four, but he was playing the five. And then we surrounded him with a bunch of uh, ball handlers, and then we had some shooters in there. Um, and the ball was just moving around the court. Uh, we were getting a lot of assists. We were having low turnovers. We were scoring a lot of points. Our defense wasn't that noticeably bad. So I think, um, you know, he, I think the way that the system that he uses just, um, it's going to be difficult for him to construct rosters that's going to make him, you know, super competitive going forward. I think he's going to have to change some of that if um if he wants to be successful like he was in the beginning part of his career at Kentucky because I think the game is just played from the perimeter in now. Um and he likes to use uh two big men a lot, but he doesn't really like to let his big men play out on the floor. He um he let his big men shoot more uh long range jumpers this year than I've ever seen him do. Uh but that's probably just because this is probably overall the best shooting team he's ever had in his coaching career probably. Um you know, even some of the guys like DJ Wagner and Justin Edwards that didn't really shoot a good percentage from three still was capable of hitting three. So he basically had pretty much every position on the court. He had guys that could shoot long range uh, jump shots. So I think that helped him a lot this year. But I think if he doesn't change moving forward, um, it's going to be tough for him uh, to continue to have success. But like I said, I think um, the fans just was a little annoyed with him and his unwillingness to change. And the process was just kind of crazy. Um, I was hearing so much different, um, diff all these different reports. Um, I was on vacation. I was trying to keep up with stuff. I was trying to uh, to post some things as I seen. And and I was even getting in trouble with, with some of the people that was watching some of the videos. They were saying I was spreading fake news and you know, I was full of BS and all this. Um, but I just um, I was just, you know, I was receiving the information in real time like everybody else was. And um, I was just speaking on it as if, you know, this is just what I'm hearing now. Who knows if it's true? Um, it was so many different reports going on. It was reports that, you know, um, Billy Donovan was flying in to take a meeting. Scott Drew and his family was here. Uh, you know, um, Danny Hurley, like it was, it was just so much going on. And I think all along after I talked to some other people, I think that Mark Pope may have been one of the top guys, um, the whole entire time. I think maybe, uh, excuse me. I think maybe a Barnhart was just waiting to, to publicly make some of the other guys say no so that he could move on to who he really wanted, which ultimately was Mark Pope. I think if Cal was going to change, he would have done it at Kentucky. He's more than likely going to keep talking his talk and underperforming. Happy to have Pope here. Feels like a real UK coach again. And I, I totally agree with you. Um, 
and and I see your uh, your YouTube name is UK Fan nineteen ninety six, and and I think nineteen ninety six was probably. Um, I mean, you can make an argument that it may have been one of the best college basketball teams of all time. I think they were scoring ninety something points a game. They were uh, holding their opponent to like sixty nine points a game. I think they. Um, when they played in the NCAA tournament, I think they outscored the, all of their uh, tournament uh, opponents by a combined like 122 points. So that team was just super dominant. It had a whole bunch of guys that got a chance to play um, professional, uh, you know, whether it be NBA or overseas. Um, and Mark Pope was one of those guys. And I agree with you that I think, you know, after the dust settled, because I think um, the fan base was just so um, the fan base was just so divided. Like, um, like me and my father, we talked about it a little bit, and my father was kind of like, "Man, I think Calipari needs to go." But then when it happened, when he actually left, my daddy was a little bit disappointed. He was like, "Oh, we ran off a, a Hall of Fame coach and this and that," and so he's not really on board yet. Um, but like I said, I think it just split the fan base even more, um, than it was already. But I think after the dust settled, I think eventually everybody will uh, get on board with Mark Pope because, you know, like, like you said, um, I think it just feels good to have a coach that represents the way the fans feel about the program. I was fine with the Pope hiring when it was reported Initially, I was a little, you know, I, I wasn't I wasn't really thrilled about it, but I was like, you know, I didn't want to jump out the window either way. But I started to, um, you know, back, go back and look at some of the um, some of the highlights of BYU because people started talking about how, you know, some of their feats that they had. Uh, they had went in and beat Kansas at home. They ended up beating Scott Drew, which is one of the other candidates, uh, supposedly. Um, they had beat North Carolina State. So I started to pay attention. I was like, okay, uh, maybe uh, Pope had, you know, maybe he, he's on to a little something. Maybe he's got a little uh, nice little thing going for him. So I, when I actually uh, look back at some of the highlights, I like the way his teams play basketball. Um, it seems like he, he has a, a nice little amount of offensive sets that he runs his guys through uh, to get good shots for his team. Um, and I think that when he gets, you know, higher quality athletes, guys that he knows can perform when he gets them in uh, his system at Kentucky, I think he has a chance to have like some special types of teams over there. Um, because that's one of the other knocks about Calipari is Calipari's offense was just so basic. It was so tailored to like, it was and I think the reason why Calipari's players are successful in the NBA a lot is because I think he doesn't really change their game too much. He basically transitions them from AAU through college to NBA. Um, he doesn't really tinker with their games too much. And I think that's why his guys are successful. He doesn't really try to turn them into college basketball players. It's almost like, um, and I don't want to be disrespectful to Cal because I think Cal did want to win. Um, I think it was just secondary to his primary goal, uh, which was to get players to the NBA. Um, so you know, I, I don't want I don't want to be completely disrespectful, but I think he just didn't want to teach too much. He didn't want to change too much. He wanted to just focus on the things that were going to help them win um, or help them be successful in the next level. And I think he cost Kentucky some games doing that. He might have cost us some championships doing that. Um, so I definitely uh, I feel great now that we have a coach that um, that is, 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 you know, his it seems like his mission statement is to win at Kentucky. Um, he cares about Kentucky. We know he knows what this is about. He knows what the expectations will be. Um, so he knows what's going to happen if, if he gets up here, he starts messing up. He's prepared for it. But also the 96 team is my favorite team of all time. And he was the captain. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, it, it's, it's probably my favorite team of all time too, to be honest with you. Um, they was just, they was like 
so good on defense. They was they was terrorizing teams on defense, and, and I think Antoine Walker is one of the most talented players that I've seen in college. Um, you know, he only played two years, but I think he was one of the best college players I've ever seen as far as just having – like he was like that first like sort of like forward that could – that could play out in the floor. Uh, he was like a, maybe I would say he was like a little less version of like what Carlo, uh, Carmelo Anthony would become a few years later, but he was like the first, that first type of like stretch floor that was like really versatile. Uh, so that, that's why I definitely, um, I love that team. Pope's modern offense is one of the things I'm most excited to see him implement with Kentucky level talent. The ceiling is high for him here. Yeah. Um, you know, he, the thing that I liked is he, it seems like he's embracing the change of how the game is played because, you know, like we were saying earlier, the game is just played from the perimeter end now. So he has an offense that's basically tailored around getting his guys good three point shots. Um, they shot like, I, I think they shot, uh, more threes than they did twos. Uh, it was a little bit more than half of their shots was like three pointers. Um, and that's just how the game's played now, whether you like it, love it or hate it. Um, most, you know, ball clubs nowadays shoot a lot of threes. Uh, a lot of, a lot of teams shoot more threes than they do twos. It's just, you know, that's how it is now. Um. But the thing that I liked about it too, <coughs> excuse me, the thing that I liked about it too when I was watching it is that, um, you know, his his big man um, that he ran, you know, he ran uh, the offense through his big man sometime and he made a lot of like good reads. He was a good passer and Mark seems to keep guys moving. He keeps guys cutting back door. Um, it's real like, it's real team oriented motion oriented basketball like keeps the defense on the heels he's gonna make you play defense for the whole entire time like it doesn't look like it's a whole lot of hero ball um one thing that i liked is uh even in transition his guys get the the three-point shot up uh they don't just you know run transition to try to attack the basket they run transition to get the best shot and get threes up and try to score in bunches. So I, I liked what I was seeing uh, when I was looking at his offense. One thing that I do like um, that he was saying also is I like how he said that, um, you know, he was going to switch up his defenses and try to uh, keep his opponent on their heels because, you know, and and it's, uh, some of the things that I'm saying may come across like it's little jabs at Calipari. I'm not trying to uh, take any shots at Cal. But I'm just making the comparison. Obviously, we know um, Pope's going to get compared to Calipari, uh, at least in the beginning of his car career here. Um, unfortunately for both of them, that's, that just is a part of it. But, um, you know, a lot of the fans was frustrated because Calipari just stuck to man-to-man -to -man defense no matter what. Um, because Calipari's goal is to have his players ready to play defense in the NBA um in the NBA you know you got to learn to defend so he he takes all you know 25 to 30 games to teach his guys how to play man-to-man -man defense and this year um for whatever reason we just could not put it together uh and our team struggled badly because of it the majority of the games we lost were because defensively we couldn't get it together uh, so I liked when I heard Mark Pope say that, you know, he's going to switch it up. He's going to give different defensive looks like he's going if he got to go to a zone, he'll go to a zone. If he's ready, you know, if he got to press, he might press. Uh, so he just seems like he's ready to do real coaching, like making adjustments on the fly, uh, changing things up in the middle of the game to keep the uh, opponent coach uh, on their heels. I just feel like he's he said all the right things that Kentucky fans need to hear at that particular time. He, um, he made me real quickly, uh, when I was watching his press conference, feel comfortable with him. Um, I feel like, like I said, his, one of the first thing he said was, I understand the assignment. Like he knows what Kentucky basketball is looking for. He knows what these fans want. We want banners. And, um, to be honest with you, I actually liked that he talked about, um, the SEC tournament um, 
because even though if you lose the SEC tournament, it's not really that big of a deal. Um, it could have a little potential um, influence on your seating uh, for the NCAA tournament. Um, but I, I just miss the days where Kentucky was winning the SEC tournament a lot. Um, I want Kentucky to win to win the SEC conference. I want them to win the uh, SEC tournament, and then I want them to either have a strong showing or win the NCAA tournament. Um, now, is that unrealistic? Yeah, of course, but that's what I want. Like, I want all of those things to be important to the coach and to the whole entire team. Like, I don't want people to have this, uh, or I want the players or the staff to have a mentality that's no big deal. Um, you know, we just trying to get ready for March. Uh, and I, I feel like he understands that, uh, you know, and it makes me feel more comfortable. He understands the pressure and why the base will react a certain way to things. Yeah. Um, he just knows, um, he's been here when he was here, you know, he might've had a couple games where he didn't play well. And, he, and we probably let him know that, uh, he needs to do better. So he's probably used to that. Uh, but I liked how he also said that Kentucky taught him how to work hard. Um, you know, he, he made a reference to, you know, when he was here, he thought he was going to sneak in the gym and get some shots up. And when he got there, he saw like four or five other players was already in the gym. Um, and, uh, you know, he learned how to be a leader. Uh, so I, I appreciate, you know, that he was saying all of that stuff as well. Coach Cal just rubbed people the wrong way. He reacted and responded to questions. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Calipari, I think um, I think when Calipari first came to Kentucky, he was very appreciative of the opportunity. I think he was he was humble a little bit. He's always been, you know, Cal's always been Cal, but I think he was humble a little bit. I think he was a uh, grateful. Um, and then I think after he won, after he, you know, he had that first little part. That first little run where he kind of became that dude, I think maybe uh, he started to feel a little like, you know, like he had done enough and we should just be happy. Um, and I think that's why a lot of the fans, uh, he kind of got under their skin. Um, kind of always basically told you, like, don't worry about it. Uh, don't You don't need to be worried about it right now. We're young. Um, we're, we're built for March. Like, he always had these excuses ready. And the thing about it is um, all of that may be true. Like your team might be young. We understand it might be difficult in the beginning of the season, but if we only going to have these guys for one year, we really don't want you to lean on the, the fact that they're going to be young because we're not going to get a chance to see them grow up and develop. If we knew they were going to be here for two or three years and you were telling us they were young, we might could swallow that a little bit better. But if we know we only going to get Rob Dillingham and Reed Shepard for one year, then we need them to be ready this year. So I think that's why a lot of people um, just had a lot of issues with stuff that he was saying. I went yesterday, but I couldn't get in. I just wanted to show support. I figured maybe 15,000 would show up. I was slightly disappointed, but knowing there was a packed house made it all worth it. Yeah, um, I kind of figured it was going to be packed. Um, and I didn't, I decided not to go. And then when I watched it on TV, I was kind of like, man, I wish I would have went on and went, uh, my wife said the same thing. She was like, we should have went down there. Um, but I was glad to see, uh, you know, they put on a show and, and I will look, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I know a lot of that probably was to stick it to Calipari. Like that was Mitch. Mitch's way of saying, hey, man, we don't really necessarily need you like the way you think we do. Um, We're not going to lay down and crumble. We're going to be all right. You go over there and you do what you got to do, and we're going to be just fine over here. I know that some of that was, you know, attributed to that. But I I loved it, though. I loved uh, seeing all the fans pack it out. I loved the fact that there was 5,000 people that couldn't get in, even though I'm I'm sorry that you wasn't able to get in. Um but I'm glad that you went. I'm glad that the other people went, even though they couldn't get in. Uh, I love that they brought out uh, a lot of the old players. Um, you know, I, I love that, like, Travis Perry was there. Um, you know, I, I just love that um, 
the whole like energy in Rupp Arena was crazy again. Everybody was excited. The former players was excited. It just felt like it was good for everybody. Um, you know, everybody just reinvigorated. Everybody's ready to work. Um, so yeah, I loved it. No one wanted the job because we were the competition. Why coach Kentucky when you can beat our ass while we are rebuilding? Shake my head. Cal's biggest issue uh, with me was in-game adjustments were terrible. Yeah, uh, I think that's that's what got Calipari a lot of hate was just he would not try to win basketball games for Kentucky. Everything he did was development focused for the NBA. And I do, I do think that, um, you know, like, I, let me, let me be honest, what he does for, for the kids, uh, a lot of that is admirable. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, you know, like you taking a lot of these kids, a lot of them grow up poor, um, you know, impoverished and you are creating generational wealth for these kids. Like I, I would never knock you for that. It's, it's very admirable. Um, but it's kind of hard to deal with when you watch some of these some of these scenarios play out and you see us maybe lose a championship here and there when when we looking at you like ah man if you would have just changed this up or if you would have just put this player in um we might could have had a few more banners i think it would have been better for everybody cuz i think it would have bought him some more time he would have got to still accomplish his dream we would have maybe had a more uh, championship or two more we would have been happy. So I think it just really hurt to see uh, Calipari just be so stubborn that he just was not going to change for the betterment of the program. Everything was just kids first, kids second, kids third, then maybe fourth, you know, he might worry about the program. So I think that's what, um, you know, kind of uh, upset most of the fans. I wanted to see Boogie, Samto, and Knox. Uh, Going to be weird seeing players with beards and kids at the game. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's wild for sure, for sure. I'm rocking with him because uh, it's time to get back to Kentucky basketball. I'm a Kentucky boy myself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that's the feeling that everybody got. Um, everybody just feels like now the focus is on uh, Kentucky. And here's the thing. Um a lot of these kids that are coming up into college now, they don't know anything outside of Calipari and Kentucky. Um, even like a, I seen something the other day when Marcus Teague was talking and Marcus Teague, you know, he was like, I'm, I'm big blue nation to the death of me, but like he doesn't really know an era before Calipari. So a lot of these kids aren't really familiar with Kentucky or with the history of Kentucky basketball. Um, and I hope that uh, when, when Mark Pope goes in to talk to a lot of these kids, I hope he goes in there and, you know, I hope he's, um, you know, he, he explains what it is and what it means to the fans. And I hope that he gets a lot of them to buy in to the Kentucky basketball tradition. And then uh, also allow them to know that, you know, if you take care of the program, the program will take care of you and you could still potentially go to the NBA. Um, you just got to go here and work hard and play your guts out. And uh, hopefully we get these championships. Everybody wins. So that's what I'm hoping that he pitches when he goes in there. I know some people didn't like uh, how fast this specific hire was made, but I feel like it was one of the best things that could have happened. We need to start recruiting and retaining ASAP. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I was I was also glad to go on and move past to get it over with, get somebody in there, um, so we can start making some moves. Because the faster we get up on things, the faster we uh, you know, can try to build this roster. We might actually have a chance to do something uh next year. If we wait too late, uh, we could just be in an ugly situation. And we might end up having one of those seasons like Louisville did. Um, and I, I do not want that. Uh, I want them to get some players in there. It looked like um, he uh, he may have two or three guys that he might bring from BYU uh, over here that look like they could um, compete in the SEC. And then um, I think today he's supposed to be uh, having a lot of meetings. Well, he's probably already had them now since it's almost 6 o'clock. But um, – you know, hopefully uh, he has some good talks with a lot of the players that's still on the roster. 
Um, and hopefully he's, you know, a lot of the uh, guys that was coming in to, um, that was committed for next year's team, uh, decommitted, which is understandable. I, I figured they would just cause technically they was recruited by Calipari. So I wouldn't expect him to just automatically say, I'm gonna stay at Kentucky when they don't even know, uh, Mark Pope. So, uh, hopefully he's talking to them and seeing where some of their heads at, and I ain't going to knock them if they decide to leave, you know, it is what it is. I just hope that they make a decision quick so we can know and we can move on. Um, but you know, uh, I, I'm a little hopeful that he might retain a few people. Um, I know a dude Thero uh, had put his name in the portal, but then I think yesterday uh, on his Instagram story, he posted a picture of uh, a UK. Uh, it might've been the, the basketball court or it might've been the locker room, but he put a, a UK logo in his story. So maybe he's uh, interested in coming back playing with Mark Pope. Um, uh, I was really uh, disappointed when I seen that he was leaving, uh, even when Calipari was still the coach, because I thought we really needed him back for next year. Um, so I hope that he does stay. Um, I know they're supposed to be talking to Big Z today. I think Big Z could end up fitting in with Mark Pope's offense really good. Um, you know, obviously Aaron Bradshaw went on and left and uh, committed to Ohio State. Um, you know, it is what it is. Some of the guys, uh, you know, is. It's just they're going to move on. Um, I can't really necessarily blame Bradshaw. He didn't really have the best uh, year probably at Kentucky. Uh, you know, he wasn't really ready physically, and he didn't really get an opportunity to play through a lot of his mistakes and stuff. So I understand, uh, you know, no big deal. Um, Mark Pope definitely can bring us back to the top. His coaching ability for sure just depends on if he can recruit. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's going to be the main thing. But I – I do think he's going to be able to recruit better. Um, you know, he he had a lot of limitations at BYU. Uh, I think it's a Latter-day Saints. Um, so, you know, it's just little things like, like you know, uh, not allowed to talk to girls, no alcohol, no uh, caffeine. Like, it was a lot of uh, things that could potentially turn off big-time recruits. Uh, I know, I think he has said that, um, or I had heard a report that, some of the kids that turned down even talking to him and having meetings with him when he was at BYU, uh, you know, they uh, they said they were willing to talk to him now that he's at a different school. So hopefully uh, he'll get on his on his recruiting uh, game and, and get us some people in there. Big Z would absolutely explode in Pope's system. Need to get him back. Yeah, I, I I'm hoping that that uh, that Big Z stays. Big Z has so much potential. Um, I don't know if if Big Z's work ethic is great yet, um, but Mark Pope said that, um, you know, he learned how to work hard in Kentucky, and I think that, um, you know, Pope could teach him how to work hard and get his full potential out of him. And I think if Big Z unlocks his full potential, I think Big Z could be a lottery pick in the NBA draft easy. Um, he's got all the talent that you need. He just got to learn how to put it together. So hopefully – uh working with uh, Mark Pope and, you know, if he decides to stay here, I uh, think it could be great things for us and him. So we'll see how that goes. The last time a bus drove into Rupp like that was when Pope team came in carrying the trophy 96. Yeah, I, I love that. Uh, I love seeing all them guys show up and support. Uh, they actually seem really happy for uh, Pope. Uh, you know, Pope seems super happy. And so – just the energy that he was bringing, like he was outside hugging the fans after the the introduction. Um, he just seems grateful. He seems happy. He seems comfortable. His family seems happy for him. Um, so, you know, I'm excited. And, um, you know, hopefully he'll put together a, a good a good staff and uh, they'll start uh, making things happen. You think he'll call Rondo to help? I, I think he'll give Rondo a call. Uh but I feel like I'm not sure if Rondo wants to coach right now. Uh, Rondo's been having some issues off the off the court lately. Rondo might want to just take it a uh, take it a little easy for a couple years because I think Rondo was saying he wants to spend more time with his family and different things like that. So I I could see Rondo, you know, just taking a couple years off from anything basketball related, and then maybe. You know, in about three to five years, I could see maybe he might 
decide to jump in there and uh, try to get a coach in the go. So we'll see. Uh, I like Rondo as a player and stuff, but Rondo, Rondo might be a little difficult to deal with. You'd, you'd have to make sure that, um, that, uh, you know, uh, Rondo and Pope could work together, see how, if they could have a good working relationship. But I think Rondo is one of those guys that's so smart that I think he could definitely help in some capacity, uh, if he's willing, you know, to be a, you know, a team player like that. So we don't know. We'll have to see. Big Z or Bradshaw, either one would go crazy in the Pope system. I hope we see one of them come back. Uh, Bradshaw already uh, officially committed today to Ohio State. So only at this point, all we could do is hope for Big Z. Um, well, I mean, I don't know what Agnenzo is going to do. Uh, we'll see. Um, but um, Bradshaw is definitely already gone. What about Tony Delk? Would like to see him as an assistant. Yeah, I, I like Tony Delk. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't mind seeing Derek Anderson be an assistant. I know Derek Anderson had been wanting to get into coaching anyways, and he seems pretty cool with uh, Pope. Um, so maybe, uh, you know, maybe they might already been talking. Uh, Wayne Turner, you know what I'm saying? It was a few guys. Like, I think they all took a picture together. Uh, so who knows? Um, I think uh, – Pope is trying his hardest to get Shepard to come back. Um, I don't think Shepard's coming back though. I'm be honest with you. If I was if I was uh, Reed Shepard right now, I think I have to go ahead and go now because I think coming back could potentially hurt his draft stock because even though he may play better, I think it's just going to be more competition for them top draft spots next year. So I think this year is. You know, everybody's saying it's one of the weakest drafts we may have in a while or if not ever. Uh, so, unfortunately, I think um, Reed should probably go ahead and go in the draft. As much as I hate to say that because I would love to have Reed Shepard back, um, I think it would be great for Kentucky if he came back. And I think he would shine in uh, in Pope's offense as well. A dude Thero posting Ohio State stuff on his Instagram. Oh, tell me it ain't so. I ain't seen that yet. Oh man, that 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 hurts me right there. Like, come on, dude. Let's not let's not do that, my man. I'm a, I'm gonna have to go check it out after after I get off the stream. But yeah, I hadn't seen that yet. One thing that has me excited is how excited all of Pope's teammates and Patino are. Everything is just going to be different. I just uh, hope we have success early too. Yeah, that's like I was just saying. Um, I love that uh, it seemed like his teammates and stuff is really happy for him. But Tino was definitely happy for him, and I know he had mentioned that uh, you know, might try to get a little game in against uh, St. John, which I think that would be cool. Like a uh, have a uh, St. John's come to Rupp Arena and hopefully uh Mark Pope uh can smack St. John's. You know what I'm saying? And then uh you know Patino can give him a little love like. I, de I definitely would uh would love to see that happen, you know what I mean? Um but yeah, I I love how excited everybody was for him. Uh it it, it feels good. It, it feels like a uh, Kentucky fans is becoming a family again. Like I said, we was a little divided, so hopefully uh you know, he should try to get Joey Hart to come back too. At this point, um I think um I think Joey Hart initially was a, was worried that with, you know, all the people we got coming in, well, all the people that we had coming in, you know, Carter Knox, um, Billy Richmond, uh, Boogie Flan, along with anybody that would have stayed from this year's team, Travis Perry. I think Joey Hart immediately knew he was not going to get no clock again for the second year in a row. Um, but I wonder if he has talked to – uh to Pope because he you might be right he might actually you know depending on who else we bring in it you know he might get a get a chance to actually play this year uh you know if I was him I would definitely have to sit down and talk with Pope and and see if he had any plans for me or if he thought I could fit in his offense uh because that might end up being a, a good good idea for him um at least giving some consideration it got to where freshmen felt like they had to leave after one year Nothing wrong with sticking around and growing up mentally and physically. Yeah, um, and, you know, I we had always been hearing that Calipari pushes guys out. 
And some of that probably is because he knows that he has other guys committed to come in next year. So he probably did give some of these guys bad advice. Um, some of these guys definitely shouldn't have left. Uh, they had holes in their game. They had stuff they needed to work on. Or like you said, they just needed to, um, you know, uh, mentally, I mean, mentally and physically develop a little bit. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a lot of, um, you know, just turnover, just come in, go to the pros, come in, go to the pros, and just recycle and, uh, on to something new next year. So hopefully, um, we'll start to get away from that just because, you know, we have been seeing where a lot of the teams that's been winning the championship lately have been very mature teams, you know, a lot of senior action. It might be, you know, one or two all Americans here and there, but mostly just guys that grew up in the system that played several years together that just, you know, that grew into a good competitive team. Um, even uh, if you look at UConn, I think they only had one McDonald's all American on their roster. And then they just had a bunch of seniors and uh, that's how they was able to run it back again. So hopefully, uh, you know, like like Pope said, he wants to mix in some 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 high quality uh, recruits as well, but he wants to kind of you know balance the roster out. He wants guys that grow in the system and develop, and you know maybe a, a burger boy here and there. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully, uh, the main thing is he just wants guys that fit perfectly in his system, which is what I want as well. Let's see, we really uh. We really about to feel the effects of not having Cal. Yeah, we didn't win, but so does a hundred other schools. Izzo and a bunch of coaches have won or no chip and don't get pushed out or disrespected. Um, and see, this is the other side of it. A lot of people feel like you feel. Um, a lot of people feel like we should have just rolled it out with Cal. Um, and I and I don't know. I used to feel like that for sure. Uh, but for some reason, I just think, you know, when it comes to college basketball, sometimes I think they they let some of these coaches become too comfortable. They get too stagnant. And I think Izzo is a prime example. Um, Izzo probably should have been fired because even though he has one championship, he has like eight Final Fours, I think. So realistically, he should – you know, theoretically, in my opinion, he should have more than one championship, uh, eight final fours. Um, the last time he won was like 2001. So it's been years since he's won. Um, and he probably should have been fired, but for some reason in college basketball, they ride it out with a lot of their, uh, their coaches, um, hall of fame coaches. And for some reason, Kentucky just does not do that. Um, so, Unfortunately, a, a lot of people feel like you feel uh, that we may have uh, made a mistake. I hope not. Uh, we'll see. Um, I was going to support whoever was the coach, regardless if it was Cal or if it was Pope. I was going to ride with him till the wheels fall off. So uh, hopefully uh, Pope will have success. Uh, let's see. The changes after divorce couldn't, couldn't, couldn't happen within the marriage. Uh, still shell shocked everything that took place, but I'm rooting for UK and Cal. Yeah, like um, this is this is my thing. I feel um, like like I like I'll put it like this: when Tubby, uh, however you look at the Tubby situation, if you feel like Tubby got ran out of town, or if you feel like Tubby left and took another job, however you look at that. I felt like at that time, I felt like Kentucky needed a change. Um, but now that a lot of years has passed, you know, Tubby Smith got put in the Kentucky Hall of Fame. Like, I don't feel no bad blood towards Tubby. Like, I'm happy for him. I respect him. Uh, I appreciate what he did for the school. And eventually, I think I will feel that way about Calipari, too. Like, after enough time has passed, at, you know, at some point, they're probably going to invite Calipari back and put him in the Kentucky Hall of Fame. Because at the end of the day, he still gave us a championship in four Final Four. So he does deserve to be in the Kentucky Hall of Fame, um, whether we like that he left or not, whether we feel that we ran him out or not. Um at some point, uh, he's going to get in, and, and I think he deserves it. And at that time, 
you know, I'll be all for it. But right now, um, I, I feel like he's the enemy right now. So I don't want to give him too much praise right now. I want, I want us to, um, I want us to make him regret leaving right now. And I want to appreciate him later. Anyenzo's great, uh, but he's more of a traditional center and doesn't fit great into a Pope offense. I'm indifferent on him staying or going. Yeah, I, I kind of feel the same way. Like, I feel like um, Anyenzo uh, has the potential to be elite defensively. But as far as like what Pope seems to do on offense, I don't really necessarily think he'll fit. Um, but who knows? Like I said, I'm I'm kind of indifferent as well. Like I like to have him back on the roster, but if he leaves, I ain't gonna lose no sleep on it. I'll be cool. Reed Shepard can't shoot better than fifty uh three percent from the three point line. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah. That's all of basketball culture one and done. Yeah. And uh and yeah, yeah, to speak about COVID and NIL. I think COVID and NIL just changed the game in a way where um maybe Cal would have had a little bit more success if they didn't push all of this in right around the same time. Uh the COVID year kind of hurt. Um the COVID year definitely made it difficult for Calipari because, you know, it's already difficult enough when you got, you know, freshman ball players playing against seniors who might be 21 years old or whatever the case may be uh 20 21 year olds but then when you got this this covid eligibility now you got even older guys even more uh, mentally and physically mature guys that he's had to compete with over the last couple years even though he had a couple on his roster itself um you know we we benefited from it a little bit you know i think we had jacob Toppin, uh um, Oscar Sheeway, um, you know, Antonio Reeves, Trey Mitchell. So we benefited from it a, a little bit as well, but I think that did hurt Calipari some. Um, and I think, I believe this year was the last year. Y'all correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this next group, uh, all the COVID, uh, eligible players will be gone. Uh, like I said, y'all have to let me know if, if, um, I'm tripping on that or not, but I, I think they all gone though. Uh, Coach K, Izzo, Few, Drew, Cal, they all lost first round tournament games. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, definitely um it happens to the best of them. Um, I think I think it just okay, listen. You you ain't wrong about that at all. All the good coaches got those type of losses on their resume. Uh even like you could look at like um Coach K when he had Zion Williams and um all them boys i think he might have had four out of the top 10 uh, prospects on his team uh you know dominant team and they lost in the first or second round i can't remember which one but they, but they were supposed to win the championship and they lost early um so it, it does happen to the best of them i think what it is is just that it happened to cal so much lately um and you know, to top it off with the fact that he kind of seemed to not really, I ain't going to say that he didn't care, but he didn't really seem, he didn't seem as hurt by it as, as the fans I think felt like he should have been. Um, I'll say it like that, uh, to just have the, the last five years and we only got one tournament win. Um, you know, like like I I think if he would have took this team to the Sweet 16 or the Elite Eight, I think uh, the whole vibe would have been completely different. I think maybe uh, fans would have still had faith in him. Uh, fans would have been okay. They would have been proud of this team. Um, but I think it's just to have so much talent on this team. And then you had like – like I didn't even expect Reed Shepard to be as good as he was. Um, so, you know, we had a couple of blessings in the skies we didn't even expect. Um, so I think a lot of people was just so disappointed. It just it just really soured things. And then on top of that, Kyle Perry just didn't really act like he cared as much. He was still, you know, even after the little meeting with uh, Mitch, he's still talking NBA stuff. And it's just like, man, I think the fans just got so sick of hearing about, you know, how there's eight all-stars or seven, seven or eight all-stars, but we can't get out of the first round. I think it just made things difficult uh, for the fans to keep being supportive. 
Duke lost three times in the first round. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like I said, it, it does happen. It does happen. Um, I think it's just the fact that it happened so much lately. I think that's that's what uh what pretty much put the nail in his coffin. Tubby was one of only four coaches to uh, last ten years. Yeah, that that's crazy though. Um, if you think about it, it just it almost seems like this Kentucky job um is just it almost seems like it's a ten year job. Like you got to get in there and you got to make an impact, and then um you know every so often it just the turnover has to be had uh that's what it seems like anyways i would love for uh mark pope to uh you know take this program over and just become a like one of those legacy stamp coaches that just coaches here and until he retires like i would love that and for him to hang you know three or four banners up and get in that class with like the coach k's and the, you know them type of dudes uh but we'll see how it goes. But that that I would love to see that. So I would love to see our program turn into that instead of it being like almost like a turnover every 10 years. So we'll see how it goes. Pope doesn't need a bunch of five stars. He just needs some decent dudes that can shoot and he can win, in my opinion. I think like a, I think like he said, the main thing is he wants to um, – find guys that fit in his system and I think that's 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 really important because like if you look at like Calipari's teams right Calipari will have teams full of talent um, and he will have guys that will move on from Kentucky and go and be uh, NBA superstars but if you look at the way he constructed his roster it just might be a a bunch of guys that don't really fit well together it's almost like an all-star team um, so it's kind of hard to jail. That's why he's always hoping that by March they'll have figured it out. And sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Um, so I think, uh, that's one of the most important things that I think Pope was a uh, focus on was he's going to get guys that fit guys that can do what he needs them to do to make his system work well. So, you know, it may not take five stars. I don't really care necessarily if we went in with, uh, five stars or if we went in with three stars or whatever it don't really make a difference to me I just want to win I want to be one of the most competitive teams in the country every year I want to get some SEC championships I want to get some SEC tournament championships I want to get some NCAA championships some final fours whatever elite eight six we 16s I'll take anything right about now so um the Oakland kid was 26 uh 26 shaking my head yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> twenty six years old is crazy because, like, I had my um my one and only uh biological child at twenty three years old, so I couldn't imagine like um you know three years later uh playing college basketball at that point. That's just uh that's insane. Um, but yeah, I, I'm tired of seeing it. Uh, it might actually help Calipari. Uh like I said a little bit, but, uh, yeah, that it was kind of getting annoying to be honest with you seeing all of these. And, and I love Antonio Reeves and, and I love Trey Mitchell. So I'm glad that we got some, those guys on our team, but yeah, it, it's pretty annoying seeing guys that old playing college basketball, especially when we had them playing against like 18 and 19 year olds. That was, you know, it was almost to be expected that you ain't going to consistently be able to compete with guys that old. Calipari will be up in our rafters one day. I never boo Patino and I never will boo Calipari. Probably wait a few years to honor him, but we shouldn't wait as long as we did with Tubby. Yeah, you might be right. Uh, we probably should have uh, took care of Tubby a little bit longer. I mean, a little bit quicker than that. And we probably should with Cal. Um, you know, like I said, I, I don't really hate Cal. I, I feel like, um, I feel like the, the, the split was, was beneficially, uh, mutual for both of us to be honest i feel like he needed to change and we needed to change um and you know sometimes it just be like that sometimes everybody just needs something different everybody needs something to to make them happy somebody needs uh some inspiration like you know so i think i think it'll be it'll light a fire underneath both of them you know and hopefully uh you know we'll come out on on top when we in the contest with them but you know I don't, I don't got no ill feelings towards him. 
Cal's relationship with Kelly Kraft is why he left, had nothing to do with the encore play. Yeah, yeah. I um the bank was closed. Yeah, I, I had always heard that um, you know, he had weird relationships with the boosters. Uh so, you know, that's a part of it because obviously um as soon as Mark Pope took the job, I initially heard that um four million was already guaranteed uh to help Pope in NIL. Um, so, you know, uh, definitely, I, excuse me, I definitely believe that's true. Um, and you know, some of that, uh, some of that you got to put on the coach too, though, because sometimes, man, you got to learn how to uh, get along with people. You got to learn how to have working relationships. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not saying you got to sacrifice your morals or your ethics or, you know, nothing crazy like that like i'm not saying you got to sell your soul but at the same time um you got to learn to get along with the people that's paying uh and if you need their money to do your job um you know you gotta try and make that work but it seems like um everybody's excited about pope like i said they opened up uh the money immediately for him uh i heard that that, that potentially um you know potentially he might get up to 10 million uh, in donations but uh yeah, I'm hearing the same thing. Y'all hearing four million, like immediately after. Uh, oh, Arkansas gave uh, Calipari five point seven. Yeah, yeah. See, and that's and that's one of the things too. Like I was just saying, Calipari has a good working, re- well, not a working relationship, but at this point, he has a good relationship with the Tyson Chicken family. Uh, like legitimate friendship. So uh, that's probably a better situation for him because. He's literally getting the money from somebody that's just his friend in real life. Uh, so as long as he maintains that relationship, uh, he's going to be good. Hunter Dickinson will go back to Kansas. Watch. Is he? Uh, see, and he's one of them ones, too. Like, I thought for sure he's, uh, you know, he'd been done by now. What? Uh, how old is Hunter Dickinson? Like, y'all got to let me know because um, I thought he would, you know, be trying to make his way to the NBA or whatever the case may be. And, and, and I'm going to be honest with you. I do feel like, uh, man, I I feel like if, if, if Kentucky would have went on and gave Hunter Dickinson the money, uh, I think we would have probably won the championship. I know some people was telling me that, uh, he, his production kind of fell off as the year went on. Um, but, uh, I feel like, um, Maybe if we would have had him, we might have been able to get it done. But anyways, we'll see. No disrespect, bro, but wanting to win the SEC championship and national uh, championships is kind of selfish. Sounds like uh, worry about us fans and our happiness. Forget about the kids, family, and their dreams. Nah, it's – well, i put it like this, right? Um, I, I'm not saying that – I like I said – I don't know if you heard me say this earlier or not, but I do think what Calipari was doing was admirable, right? Um, especially because, you know what I'm saying? I'm a I'm a black male, so when I see, you know, a lot of poor black kids, uh, Calipari's helping a lot of them. So I would never act like I don't, you know, I would never say I don't care about the kids and their family. Um, like, I don't know if y'all remember this or not, but at one point, uh, Bam out of bios, um, name came up in some allegations, um, where he may have taken some money or whatever the case may be. Um, well, I, I had seen something where I think, uh, Bam's mother was living in a trailer park, uh, while he was here at campus. Um, and I told myself, I said, knowing Calipari, the type of dude he is, he probably gave Bam's mama some money. Um, because, you know, how could Bam focus and, and be ready to do what he got to do here if he's worrying about his mama, uh, you know, worry about his mama's electric getting cut off in the trailer park? Uh, so I, I definitely uh, respect Calipari for what he does. And I, mi- I might be coming across selfish, uh, but I, I don't mean to be. Um, I, I'm I'm just excited that um, – that we that we got somebody that I feel like uh is trying to give the fans what they want. Um because like I said, I think uh I think the fans were willing to uh 
to compromise with Calipari at first, but I think Calipari stopped being willing to compromise with the fans. Um, but I don't want to come across like I don't care about the kids. Like, and, and I also, I understand that majority of these top tier kids don't wake up and go, Oh man, I just want to come play at Kentucky. Like, if I was one of them, obviously I would because I'm from Lexington. So I would be one of the ones that dreamed about playing at Kentucky. But if I was from Chicago or New York, my dream probably wouldn't be to play for Kentucky. It would just be able to get to the NBA. So I completely understand both sides of that. Um, and like I said, I still hope that that guys that come to Kentucky are successful and able to go to the NBA and and have great careers in the NBA as well. Um, and I'm sure all the guys that Calipari brings to Arkansas, he's still going to do the same thing. He's still going to get them uh, to the NBA. So my bad if, if I came across a certain type of way, I, hopefully I cleared it up. I agree we need to hear a different voice. Yes, I just think, um, yeah, we just we just needed a, we just needed a different voice. Um and a lot of a lot of people have was definitely clowning Pope. Uh, yeah, I like I said, I I seen so many people angry. I seen I seen uh, Kentucky fans turn into Calipari fans over Kentucky. Uh, they were so mad. And, but I understand. Um, you know, it's it's a grieving period in that. Um, you know, because we we don't realize it, but Calipari's you know fifteen years is a long time. Like like my daughter is is 17 uh so he's been the coach almost as long as my daughter's been alive you know so it's a uh, it's gonna take people probably a couple years before they get over this is you know this this one probably did a lot to some people you know just just like some of the kids are saying like it's weird to them um uh, because they just never thought of kentucky having another coach so um uh, a lot of them are probably so confused about what to do now um that's why you probably seeing some of them uh, say that oh, I just got to reopen my recruitment and different things like that. Um, but then you got some guys like uh, Jasper Johnson. He's a, uh, you know, he's got, he's got a uh, bluegrass in, in his blood. You know, his daddy played football at Kentucky um, and Jasper played a lot of his uh, high school ball in Kentucky. So he knows what it, what this Kentucky stuff means to everybody. So, you know, it's, it just, um, it's it's just difficult for everybody, so uh, it's just gonna take a little while to uh, to work out. Oh wow, uh, Hunter Dickinson is twenty three years old. Yeah, I didn't know that. Big Z just committed to Arkansas. He's the he's the first one that officially followed him. Man, that's crazy. Um, I didn't see that one coming. I ain't gonna lie to you uh, because I feel like um, Big Z had a weird relationship with Kentucky and Calipari. Um, you know, I had heard that, uh, that big Z, uh, wasn't practicing a little bit and different things like that. And Calipari was putting him on the bench. So maybe they, maybe they worked it out. Um, but, um, you know, Hey, good luck to big Z. I'm not mad. Like I said, I understand the kids leaving and wanting to go to, uh, you know, with their coach. Cause at the end of the day, um, one of the most important things and one of the biggest factors on your career is who's coaching you. So I'm not even, I'm not mad at that. Like it just, you know, I just hope that Pope gets some guys in here to fill these spots. But, um, like I said, I appreciate that. Um, you know, like he met with, uh, Pope, uh, you know, he at least gave Pope a chance to say his piece and then he made his decision. Like, I'm cool with that. Duke got Zion from us because of that big house. They got the Zion family. That's the game. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I remember. I actually saw that uh, house uh, recently. I looked at it just because I was I was uh, going over some of that stuff. It was a nice house, and you know that was that was right before you was able to just really do it like that. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't blame him. I would have probably had to give Zion's family a house too if you know if if that was uh if that was what was on the line. But I, I do remember that, that it was kind of coming down to Kentucky and Duke and they gave him the house. So it is what it is. Big Z is, is fine. Had him uh, last year. If he was uh, good, would have got drafted this year. <laughs> I think Big Z will end up being okay though. He just got to, um, 
you know, he just got to tune up some stuff. I had a daughter that graduated high school with a 4.3 GPA. That's excellent, by the way. She couldn't get a scholarship and I couldn't afford it. She passed away a couple of years ago at age 28. It's a blessing to get a free ride. Oh man, I'm uh I'm sorry that uh that she passed away. Uh you know, sorry to hear that. Uh 28 so young. Um yeah, I'm sorry to hear that for sure. Thoughts and prayers go out to you. I did uh I did put my name in the fan transfer portal initially after the emotion. I just uh sided with both sides. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, um I understood a, a lot of people was like that. It was just so new. Um it caught people off guard and like you said, it was just emotions was going crazy. Uh um so like I said, I, I got I gotta give all the fans a little time to grieve, let everybody sort out their feelings. Um and then uh you know we get back to business at some point but yeah it's it's uh it was it was kind of sad for me because like i was kind of uh initially right after we lost i was kind of on the like we need to fire calipari like i was like we need to give somebody else a chance and then when he left i was like oh man he left us i was like he didn't he didn't leave us for real did he like so I, I was a little thrown off too. Like I said, I was on vacation when all this stuff was happening. So it was, it was, you know, not, not, I'm not saying cry, like cry me a river. I was on vacation. Like I get it. But, um, but what I'm saying is I was trying to like enjoy my vacation, but I couldn't stop thinking about this whole situation. And I was like keeping up with it. So as much as I can, I was trying to make a video here and there, uh, you know, just to touch bases with you guys. I knew I was going to talk to y'all when I got back, but I was just trying to, you know, see what was going on. So it was, it was just, it was crazy. Like we just got to be honest. It was crazy. Uh, so we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens, but I, I'm, I'm glad you, uh, you know, I'm glad you took your name out the portal and, and uh, <laughs> glad to have you back. Chuck Martin got big Z from overseas. Most definitely expected. Yeah. You know, it is what it is. Um, somebody said, apparently big Z loves marble. <laughs> yeah. That, that's, that's crazy. Uh, that's crazy. But yeah, man, um, man, if, if it, it feels good to talk to y'all again, uh, you know, I'm gonna start uh, checking out some of these players that's uh, supposed to be uh, potentially coming with Pope. Um, I might try to do some reaction videos to some of their highlights. Um, I looked at a couple of them a little bit. I, I like like what I'm seeing. I think the one, the big guy's name Ely. Uh, he's probably a lock to come here because he put in the transfer portal that he don't even want to be contacted, so he knows where he's going, whether it's here or wherever it is. He knows already. Um, but I, I kind of liked him. I kind of like his game. They call him, uh, you know, they well, they, they don't call him a uh, Joker, but they say he plays similar to Joker. So uh, I, li I like that for sure. Um, so yeah, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we, we we gonna we gonna it's gonna heat up. So um, we'll probably uh, we'll probably be talking a lot uh over the summer more than usual because um it's just going to be day to day thing uh, where we're going to be figuring it out together. But anyways, I appreciate you guys for uh, clocking in with me um, and uh, feel free to keep commenting uh, and, and let me know what you think about all of this. And uh, we'll get back at it next time. Sports and discourse with Derek Stevenson. I'll check y'all guys later.